<laughs> what do say B? Oh, I'm missing a nail. What up? <laughs> wow. Hey. I didn't shake when she was laying on here. <laughs> She's watching that tumbleweed. Why is she watching it like that though? She's just been real observant lately. Can I have my notes? Thanks, kiddo. Oops, oh, sorry. Alright. <clears throat> What's going on with the light? What light? Does it look weird? It's the sun. Okay. Hey, baby girl. All right, ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, everybody, welcome to Smile Girl, Don't Be Nervous. I am Juana. I am the mom. And I'm Esperanza. I'm the daughter. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay. Well, moving on from that. <laughs> Boisterous introduction. <laughs> uh, this week we are celebrating National Read Across America Day, which is also Dr. Seuss Day on March 2nd. And why do you look at me like that? I uh, was going to talk to you about this. Did you know that everybody has issues with Dr. Seuss? Why? I don't know. So I'm trying to. I was trying to remember. And I think there was like something going on, and this is Nicholas. Um, I think there was something going on about how they were saying his books were racist, like a couple of years ago, I think. Okay. Yeah. So when I was looking up like visuals for this to like post um, for the second, um, there was like ways to celebrate National Read Across America Day um, without Dr. Seuss, but it's like Dr. Seuss's birthday that day. Yeah. So. Like this is a holiday because of him. Yeah. So like yeah. without him, it wouldn't be a holiday. So I feel like the reason to celebrate is for Dr. Seuss. Well, if people are saying he's racist. <clears throat> Move on. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Anyways. Whatever way you'd like to think about it, um, March 2nd. And, okay, so first, sorry if you can hear the wind. Oh my gosh, it is so windy here. I don't Um, I think on the sign coming home, it said gusts were over 55 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Um, so the highways are shut down. Hat six down the street is really? like... Really? Because I took the highway. No, no, no. Highways for big trucks. Oh, yeah. Like high, high loads or whatever. Yeah. Light loads, high and light loads. Um are closed and so hat six is totally packed did you see that when you okay. came in i was like damn and so i always know when um hat six is packed because sonic is packed yeah right because they're like right across the street from each other and if i know there's a big old long line in sonic i always look over just automatically look over mm -hmm. and then i'm like oh yeah that's because everybody's over at uh, hat six so interesting there but if you hear it in the background that's what it is we are not doing demolition on the house or anything it is just the wind it's just the wind because we live in Wyoming. So there's that. <laughs> Unfortunately. No, I actually love Wyoming. No, I'd rather yeah. be in Wyoming yeah. than anywhere else. Anywhere else. I would most definitely rather be in Wyoming. I don't know. I haven't visited any of the other, like, Midwest regions, like Minnesota or Missouri or anything like that. I don't know. Like, I've been in Nebraska. That's a definite now. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, like, Utah. Oh, I live across. <laughs> <laughs> Utah's pretty. Utah's pretty. Um, um, yeah, they have, right. they have lots of things there too. It's really green. They have lots of mountains and stuff. And Utah's, stuff. or not Utah, um, Nebraska's pretty, but not for living. Yeah. Um, I really like Colorado, but their cost of living is super high. And, and there's a ton of people there. So, yeah. Yeah. It's and we're not too, really people. way too, way too people for me. Yeah. <laughs> I got a social battery that likes to run out sometimes. Yeah, because <laughs> Yeah. And she doesn't give a 20% warning. Yeah. Mm -mm. No. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm good for a so, few days. And I'm like, yeah. 
Oh my god, I'm gonna kill everybody in the ten foot radius. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we must prefer Wyoming, so that means we have to deal with the wind and the cold winters. This winter was pretty good. This winter was pretty good. We didn't get a whole lot of snow this winter, um, but it froze. That was a little freaky. I didn't really like that a whole lot. I need to redo my hair. Um, well, crazy thing is you go to a school. I sure do. So you can get that hair um, up. Well, they won't let me go the color that I want to go. Yeah. Yeah. Annoying! <laughs> <laughs> All right. So remember to like, share, and hit the bell for notifications for when our episodes drop. I just wanted to give out an apology because Anthony is doing a wonderful job on getting them uploaded on time on Wednesdays when they are supposed to be uploaded. But I have been failing <laughs> at getting things in on time. Um, kind of had an overload of things that I was doing there for a minute, but I am back on track. Um, I spent most of yesterday and a lot of today in um, t t t t today um, in getting Smile Girl back on track. So I have checked in with speakers uh, for the next 12 episodes because they work 12 episodes at a time. Mm -hmm. So I have checked and followed up with the 12 speakers that are going to be on for the next episodes and they have all confirmed. So I'm super Yay. excited. We've got some great speakers coming up. I don't even know we who have, have to be honest. We have um, Shauna Frankie, of course, my bestie. Mm -hmm. um, we also have Tara Jimenez, who is my other bestie. Our bestie. <laughs> That's our girl. <laughs> Her godmother. Yeah. Um, and then we have Leslie Caps. Um, oh. She will be on. And is Miss she coming here or are we Skyping? Right now we are just Skyping. Okay. Um, until, you know, we get further, then we'll see what our schedule is like. And then we have Miss Danielle coming on again. And she will be promoting her new book. Oh my um, God. Yes. I want to read it. Who's so going, fun. Yeah. Going to publication here, like, I think, I think she said spring. Um, so like here pretty quick. So I'm super excited. So my Facebook or our, the, the smile and my personal Facebook page will be flooded with all of her um, advertisements for her book coming out. So if you happen to come across it, please purchase it. Um, her TikToks are so funny. Yeah, I love her TikToks and they are so visual. They're like really good. She's super creative. Mm -hmm. There isn't anything that that girl does that I just don't love. Like, she's amazing. And she's super fucking talented. Yeah. Yeah, she is. So, um, go hit her Love up. Love her. Yep. Absolutely. That's my cheer coach. <laughs> um, and I think that is it for speakers that are coming up for the next 12. So, half and half. So, I think we have six with just us and then six with speakers. So, All right. I think um, that's it. So that's what we've got coming up. We've got some great topics coming up, um, like <laughs> fear and bigotry and segregation and uh, wisdom and the youth of wisdom or wisdom from youth. Um, so I'm super excited about that. Can we talk about your makeup really quick? What about it? It looks so good. <laughs> I did lots of different things uh, today. So... I was just going to try it on camera and see if I liked it. I kind of like how it looks. Good. Um, so if you like it, let me know. Drop me a note in the box. Let me know. Um, so we're going to get started. So spoiler alert, um, we are talking about the House of Night series. Uh, we are in book four called Untamed. And they that series is written by PC and Kristen Cass, who is a mother and daughter author duo. That's right. right. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. All right. It sounded weird as it was coming on. I was like, I don't think that's right. Okay. Um, and this is, this book series is about is about a vampire finishing school centered around a main character named Zoe Redbird and her circle as they are in the finishing school. What episode is this? The huh? What episode is this? This is episode twenty five. Because we go in twelve. So this okay. is twenty five. <coughs> this is the first of our oh, sorry, pardon me. season three. Yes. Uh huh. Ah! <laughs> sorry. So the mm -hmm. High Council of the Tulsa House of Night. Sorry, words and trying to get all of this together is not really working with me right now. Um, the leader of the Tulsa House of Night is a vampire named Neferet. 
and she is starting to get real sketch in her decisions and so Zoe and her nerd herd and other teachers are noticing like what is going on and they're trying to get it figured out like how they're going to fix everything that's going on because everything's kind of going amok everything's going awry um, right now she is wanting to wage war against the humans because of the deaths of two teachers that have happened at the house of night uh come to find out later the deaths of the teachers weren't by the humans they were your demons um they were I'm not your quiet. demons. <laughs> yeah my <laughs> demons didn't kill anybody your demons didn't kill the teachers um so there were other circumstances that led to the deaths of the teachers uh and that i'm not going to spoil that for you i'm not going to give that much of a spoiler alert so the quote that we are going over this week is there is always time for wisdom so the context around this quote sorry <laughs> snuggles is like right in the camera <laughs> <laughs> so some context <laughs> Oh, oh man, this, this is good she, shit. She has been on a oh roll since I got home, and I've only been gone for a couple hours. I don't know what what is up with her. <laughs> we should post that video. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's <laughs> definitely gonna happen. So the context around this quote is: Nefret has officially waged war against the humans because of the murders of the teachers. Shakina, who is a member of the High Council, um, and they are located on an island off of Italy, if I remember correctly. And so they have a panel and they are like the high council. So they are like the leaders. Okay, so Shakina is like, I can't remember if she's like three or four hundred years old and she is like super powerful. Um, she's been on the council for a minute. They all have terms, but they are, Neferet is in front of the council and she's explaining to them like what's going on. Uh, Shakina is saying that Neferet's judgment is skewed because since she loved both teachers so much and wanted retribution and that in itself is clouding her judgment with her declaration of war against the humans which has been rejected by the council. Shakina says were you thinking clearly you would realize that Nix's council never makes rash decisions. They weighed the situation carefully even though word of your declaration of war did not come from you as it should have. So she declared war in the school, in the Tulsa House of, House of Night School, but she didn't validate that decision through the High Council as she should have. Like there should have been like a chain of command, a chain of command that she did not follow at all. But then the High Council heard about it and so now they are there at the school I'm trying to figure it out. So Shakina goes on to say, you know, my sister, that something of this magnitude should have been presented before Nix's council for their consideration. Neferet says, there was no time. Then Shakina says this line to Neferet with all of her power. So as, it's, as it is described in the book, the way Shakina says there's always time for wisdom, it, imagine having the most powerful person you know speak to you in a very heated way that you can feel their power so the way it des it's described in the you book feel my right, right. <laughs> so the way it's described in the book is as soon as shakina says this line like everybody's hair stands up on their arms and on the back of their neck and they're just like literally waiting for Shakina to just jump through and just like choke her out like that is where she's at okay so she says that there is always time for wisdom I know you didn't like this quote tell me what you didn't like about this quote why do you why who says do you, I don't like this quote well you were just like uh because <laughs> fucking wisdom so uh <laughs> what what tell me tell me tell me tell me tell me I don't know that. I just don't like the word Wisdom? Yeah. Why? Because it's just overused and I guess, okay, wait, nope, that's going to make me sound stupid. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Fuck it. What's the meaning of wisdom? Wisdom. 
It's funny that you asked that because I do have the definition in here. Hey, look at me go! Right? <laughs> so this article is found in the 2010 volume 17 issue of journal. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> that Oreo is trying to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, volume 17 issue of Journal of Adult Development, pages 70 to 80. It's called Wisdom and Positive Psychosocial Values in Young Adulthood by Jeffrey Dean Webster. So wisdom, it has been considered the epitome of human development, a hallmark of human virtue and a fundamental psychosocial strength from both Eastern and Western societies since antiquity. So wisdom is super valued in not only like the US, but like literally everywhere, you know, from like China to, you know, like Eastern cultures, um, mm -hmm. Western cultures, Mexico, Canada, like it, it's a thing that's like super, super valued in between like, like worldwide. Wisdom also implies a capacity to live, not just think in a manner informed, not only by knowledge, but also by a reflective and deeply felt sense of the good. So to answer your wis your wait, wait, wait. can you reread that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wisdom also implies a capacity to live, not just think, in a manner informed not only by knowledge, but also by a reflective and deeply felt sense of the good. So wisdom is defined as the competence in, intention to, and application of critical life experiences to facilitate the optimal development of self and others. Okay. That is a super wordy definition. Did you understand what that meant? Not a damn word. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> Look at my underline. She's a little squizzly. Oh, yeah. So what this is a long way of saying is that when you experience something in life, right? It's like a life lesson, mm -hmm. right? And you learn things, you know, you learn not to touch the hot stove, right? Right. So, no yeah. <laughs> Fucking idiot. So in taking that lesson, you apply it to your life. So you think about it, right? You take the lesson, you think about it, you really mull it over, and then you intentionally use that lesson with something else. Right. Okay. And then doing that repeatedly with not just that particular life lesson, but with other life lessons as well. Right. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. So that is the definition of wisdom. Okay. So how do I put that into my own words? So. With a way that I can like. I would, I would say that wisdom is the ability to use your lessons in everyday life. Okay. This article <clears throat> further explains that not only do you use it in your life, but you also use it to further the lives of everybody else as well. Hey, wait. <clears throat> I do this with fuckface. We're not going to throw out names because, but like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, we do it all the time. We're doing it right now. Right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is, that is the definition of wisdom. Now, do you think you have wisdom? I just marked, look at that. I just marked all over myself. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Oh, yeah, dude, she's on it. Do you, do, you, <clears throat> do I think I have wisdom? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I use it all the time, clearly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think there are people that don't have wisdom? Yes. Do you think those people have common sense? <clears throat> no. Are they book smart? Yes. Okay. I think a lot of people learn those lessons and then just throw those lessons out the window and don't think about them ever again. Okay, so they're not they're not doing the application. They're not of, taking it. Yeah. In. Yeah. They're just like. Oh, I okay. experienced that, and we're moving on. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, but you missed a step, right? <laughs> You're missing, like, this whole, like, th there's three steps here yeah. that you just whoop right over. Yeah. <laughs> um, but a lot of the time, those people are book smart. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not book smart. 
Okay. All right. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I'm pretty book smart, though. You are pretty book smart. But I'm also very street smart. In a sense. In a sense. I think you're pretty naive in the street smart area. Yeah. I think you're getting better. Yeah. But. Because you've had to learn some shit in the last couple months. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Gotta do what you gotta do, man. (laughs) But you're getting there. Yeah. You know, those life lessons. For sure, for sure. There is hair all over me. I know. (laughs) So wise persons are also mindful in that they deliberately intend their actions to have wisdom related consequences. Wisdom is not an accidental byproduct of some process or an epiphany or an epiphom an epiphenomenon of some unrelated actions. Okay, so that line is the thank you, Stella. Sorry. Okay. You have to talk a little bit louder. Wisdom is not an accidental byproduct. Okay, so okay, it's not, so it doesn't just happen. Yeah, it's, it just doesn't happen. Like, it has to intentionally come because you're thinking about, so they're mindful and that they deliberately intend their actions to have wisdom-related consequences. So this goes back to that saying that we always have, with every choice has a consequence, both good, bad, or indifferent. We think about those choices because we know that there are going to be consequences either way, right? And we... <laughs> Oh, man. She's, like, snoring (laughs) as she's awake. (laughs) I love you, Snuggles. So we make those choices knowing that there are consequences ahead of time, Mm -hmm. right? And so we willingly take on those consequences. So those, this article is saying that wise people do that because when we make those decisions, we make those decisions intentionally knowing the consequences, right? So it's not like some, like seven-year-old, right? Is out there riding a bike and they're trying to like pop their bike up to get onto the curb because they just want to be on the curb. They're not thinking of the consequences like, hey, like I could biff it and I could bust my nose open or I could... <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> or I could um, bend the rim of my bike. They're not thinking of those things, right? So they aren't <clears throat> deliberately taking on those consequences. And so for them, that choice is a byproduct, right? Because they're not, it's not, they're going to get wisdom afterwards because that pain is going to be <laughs> the lesson. Right, but they're not thinking and willingly make those choices beforehand. Right. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. You've got notes here. What you got? It's just shit that you're saying. Okay. All right. So application, therefore, is so application like doing, doing, putting it in doing wisdom. Action. Yep. Therefore, is required if potentially wise behaviors are to be more than unrealized New Year's Eve resolutions. Wisdom is forged in the exigencies of real life and emerges from grappling with critical life events, not the mundane, trivial, minute of daily routine. Okay, does that make sense? So we're not learning by just going through our daily routine, like day to day to day, like schedule. I wake up, I have my cup of coffee, I get ready, I go to work, I go to work, and then I come home and drive through rush hour traffic and come home and make dinner. Boom. There's no wisdom there. Right. Right. Where the wisdom happens is when you're intentionally putting yourself into those situations or you have those critical life moments, right? So if you, you, you know, you get up and you get up and you do, what is going on underneath the trailer? <laughs> I'm terrified we're going to collapse. <laughs> um, the ice is melting off, or not the ice. Yeah, the ice is melting off of the trailer. 
Um, but there are noises coming from underneath, and so I don't know if it's just warm enough. And I can, no, I can feel like, it. Like, we used to have cats living under there, but Justin has blocked it off, so I don't know that there are any animals under there, and if there are, I don't know how they're getting under there. I can feel. So, we're feeling the bumps of something under the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's why we're like, um... So those critical life moments happen it, like when, say you're going to work and you get into a car accident. Say you're coming back home and the weather is inclement and um, you hit a curb, you know, on the way home. Or um, you're coming home and you have a flat tire on the way home. You know, like those critical life events. You know, those really big things, the loss of a person, the um, bringing on of another person, getting into a relationship, getting into a marriage, um, you know, the adopting a child, having a child, you know, um, being pregnant. Like, those are all those critical life events that come in to another set of wisdom realities. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So reflections upon such key occurrences enable wise individuals to set goals in multiple life endeavors which contribute to optimal growth. That is the realization of full potential akin to Maslow's notion of self-actualization. Does that make sense? No. Okay. So what this is talking about is wise people set goals. Okay, I'm going to put a Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So there's a triangle, I'll post it. And um, you've got your basic needs, food, shelter, water, clothing, right? Boom, okay. But then you get further up and there are certain things that you need. You need the community, you need the relationships, you need the love, you need you know, all of those other things, right? Okay, so in order to reach self-actualization, which I believe is the top one, if I remember correctly, psychology classes happened so long ago um so self-actualization i believe is the top one and that is like where you have really stepped into like your full potential you are being all you can be in the army um what the fuck that was that? that was like that used to be the slogan of the army i don't know if it is now be all you can be and so it was a song it is not anymore. I can tell you that. Okay, so, anyways, um, so that is where you reach your full potential, and you are doing all of the things you are supposed to be doing in your life here. You found your purpose. You found your purpose, and you're doing it, and you're working it, and you're doing all the things, right? So, why is people set goals? to get there and to do those things okay that's not ice that's not ice there there's got to be the cats fighting under there so uh, now i'm totally distracted wise individuals are not sage misers Okay, so did that line make sense to you? No, no. I could, this self actualization. Yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. So wise individuals are not sage misers, hoarding their hard earned secrets of a successful life and fulfillment. Rather, they seek to engage others and share these valuable insights within their broader community. In other words, wise individuals are concerned about both self and others. So going back to what we were talking about before, those lessons that you learn they don't keep that knowledge to themselves. They they disperse that knowledge as far as they can with people they talk to in their circle, in their community, within their friends, with their kids, you know, anybody who is going along that same path, anybody who has those questions, we do this because we have the channel. Um, we tell all of our friends these lessons. We have talks with Anthony. You know, I just had lunch with Ms. PJ and, you know, we share wisdom between the two of us and between life lessons that we have learned every time we have coffee or lunch or whatever we're doing. Um, this is up. Man, you are writing a lot today. I never, okay, so you need to stop me when you've got some. You got something? No, I'm literally just writing what just you're saying so I can comprehend. Okay. <laughs> if I'm like, 
frantically writing, that's when you need to ask. Okay. All right. So, vital qualities of emergent wisdom develop in late adolescence and early adulthood. So, this is where this article started to get real cool for me. Okay. Wait. Because, reread that line. I missed yeah. it. Vital qualities of emergent wisdom develop in late adolescence and early adulthood. So that's where wisdom really starts coming into play. Like when you start getting those life lessons. Okay. So younger adults were more likely than adolescents or older adults to have learned valuable lessons about themselves. Now, we were just talking about this at lunch today. Right. So um, we have a friend whose daughter um, has keeps earbuds in in the morning because she doesn't like to talk to people in the morning right she doesn't like having those conversations that is her boundary she has learned that about herself right so that is that's a wisdom step right self-care personal boundaries how to say no you know those things so those are the lessons that you're supposed to learn in early early adolescence i'm sorry early adulthood late adolescence stage Right? <clears throat> Adolescents were shown to have a higher frequency of empathy support forms of experience wisdom relative to self determination, assumption, and knowledge flexibility, experience wisdom relative. Oh man. Sorry. <laughs> All right, take two. Adolescents were shown to have a higher frequency of empathy support forms of experience wisdom relative to self-determination and assertion and knowledge and flexibility forms in comparison with middle age and older groups. I found this really interesting because how crazy is it that adolescents have a better support system than adults middle age and older? School. Middle of school, we're not around people all the time in this. I mean, like, unless your job requires that. Mm -hmm. But as you get into adulthood, you just kind of seclude, you think? Yeah. Like, you're, you get a social battery. Right. Um, and when you're younger, you don't really have that. My hair is getting long as fuck. Yeah, it is. Um, so I thought that was really interesting that they have better friends. Yeah. Than adults do. Kids are more, I think kids are more vulnerable too. You know, they're more open, they're more vulnerable, they're, they're pure. putting themselves out there. Whereas once you hit adulthood, like it, it seems like people get jaded and mm -hmm. they just don't want to put themselves out there anymore. So and they're real secluded. Kids are very pure and don't, are very naive. They don't see the evil. Mm -hmm. They don't see the bad. They don't see how anything can go wrong. Like, right. And with us, like, we're constantly picking shit apart. Mm hmm Yeah. We're not going to have friends. Yeah. Because we're picking everybody apart. Right. Um, so, according to Cooperman, wisdom is a major factor in and perhaps is required for both a very good pattern of moral choice and also, more broadly, a sense of what the most important values to aim for in life are. Wise individuals have achieved a measure of ego integrity, hold life attitudes consonant with positive and integrative views of self that lead to feelings of identity coherence and espouse values consistent with positive self growth and understanding while issuing an overly hedonistic orientation. So I had to look up hedonistic because I didn't know what that meant. And hedonistic means engaged in the pursuit of pleasure, centrally self indulgent. So what this study is saying is there's kind of a lot in here did i lose you mm -hmm. okay so there's there's a lot in here they hold attitudes constant constant with positive and integrated views of self that lead to feelings of identity coherence so they really know who they are who's they the wise people okay Okay, so they have that knowledge of themselves and what is acceptable for themselves in order to be a whole person, right? They really focus consistently on positive self-growth, okay? Um, 
and they um, don't engage in the hedonistic behaviors. Okay. Is that what this shoe is? That's the uh, self-indulgence. So the Wait, over. But this is shoe. Does that mean that they don't engage? In yeah. That? They, so they um, don't get overzealous on those super harmful behaviors: gambling, um, sexual activity, drinking, drugs. You know, they don't go above and beyond those things. What I like here is that they, this article says they don't overly engage in those things. It doesn't say that, that they don't engage. Oh, don't. Overly. Yeah, overly. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> um, overly. Okay. Okay. So I thought that was interesting because, so they're still in the world and they are still part of the world, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's how you get those lessons, right? So you would get old and have all those wisdoms if you were young doing all this dumb shit. Right. Right? Because that's how you know that's to not you know. do these that's things. That's how you learn. Right. Right. So recently forgiveness in relationships has been predicated and demonstrated to be typical of wise individuals as well i found that super interesting hang on you can read a little bit slower i'm sorry forgiveness in relationships has been predicted and demonstrated to be typical of wise individuals as well okay so they, they are easily they forgive for they easily forgive mm -hmm. oh shit yeah yeah i was like whoa okay all right. Oh, okay. because I understand that like mistake shit happens. happens, you know, um, and so that further goes into they do not experience high levels of discomfort with closeness to romantic partners. Rather, intimacy is an attractive goal that engenders mutual caregiving and support. Wisdom and attachment anxiety are also inversely related, suggesting that fears of abandonment or of being rejected by romantic partners is not a major motivating factor in these relationships. So they are really open to those relationships. They're really open to connecting with other people. And that fear of abandonment and um, being rejected and being rejected isn't something that they like overly dwell on. I found that really interesting. Like I was feeling pretty good until we hit there. <laughs> So you're telling me I'm not wise. <laughs> um, and, and that makes sense if they are really um, going back up to this one from before, um, that they have positive and integrative views of self that lead to feelings of identity coherence. Because they know who they are. And they know what they bring. And they know what they bring. So if you are wise and you have that confidence in who you are and what you bring to the table, of course that abandonment and fear of rejection isn't going to be there for you. Because you're like, no matter what, I'm still me and I'm good. I'm still me. I'm, yeah, like I'm set. I'm taken care of. I know I'm still going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Right? So that totally makes sense. Like once you think about it logically, mm -hmm. like it totally makes sense. <laughs> I just have trauma. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we got to overcome the traumas first. Yeah. Um, so why is younger adults espouse life attitudes consistent with a growth orientation and a striving to, to develop one's potential? We had talked about that earlier. They do so without jeopardizing the rights or opportunities of others to achieve the same aims. And in fact, nurture reciprocal and rewarding relationships with social partners. So what they're saying is, is once they are making those goals for the self-actualization, right, into becoming the best people that they can be, they aren't stepping on everybody else to get there. Okay. Okay. They're not running over the little guy. They're not screwing over Tommy. They're not taking advantage of Betty. They're not, you know, telling off their stepmom and, you know, they're not, you know, stealing money from their cousins. That's not, that's not what they're doing. They're really focusing on helping others achieve their same goals. So going back to like the really old, like 
lessons that like you are the sum of your friends mm -hmm. right so that goes along with that mm -hmm. right because they're really wanting to see you know everybody really succeed and you know being in the same circle and we're all doing you know great and you know your wins are my wins even though they're not my wins and I'm not directly benefiting from them like we are still winning like everybody is still winning in the circle I, I see that a lot in our underground circle honestly right that's so weird I was literally just like oh my god this is so Michelle yeah in between like Michelle and Shauna and I we're like oh my god like her wins are my wins and my wins are her wins and you know I just shared a win with the group chat um, yesterday because I had um, an author who I just met and totally have a girl crush on hold up no um, you didn't share this to the group chat you just called me not on this one. I no no I shared it to Shauna and Michelle's group okay chat. so fuck yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> You were at work. <laughs> no, I was sleeping. <laughs> oh, oh, see, that's why I didn't tell you. <laughs> um, so a podcaster that I started listening to um, shared our episode that we just released this week on her podcast Facebook channel. Um, and was like, hey, go watch her. And I was bawling. I was, was legit it? bawling. Uh, Miss Helen. Helen Edwards from Sexy Freedom Media. Um, she shared um, an episode on her podcast page, Facebook page. And so that was a win for me, right? And I am in my room just totally bawling, like talking. happiness tears. Um, because one, I really look up to Miss Helen and she is amazingly beautiful and she's got a great podcast. If you have a minute, please go check her out. Her podcast is Sexy Freedom Media. And she talks about like life lessons, kind of like what we do here. And she talks about how to just kind of let go of what other people think of you and just kind of do your own thing. And there is something really sexy about the freedom of being able to do those things. And that is totally what her podcast is about. Oh, this is the girl you showed me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was super excited about that. And so it was a win for me. And so I shared it into our group chat. And they were super excited That's about it. Um, no, on her podcast page. That isn't her podcast. That's her personal page. So, um, I'm super excited about that. And so, Miss Michelle McGill, who owns McGill, for, well, her and her husband <laughs> own McGill Photography. They are amazing photographers. I have talked about them before on this podcast. Please go look them up on Facebook. I will link their page um, into the show notes. They have amazing photos. They do photos for uh, underground uh, bull riding productions. They were also received their... Uh, PRCA card and so they were photographers PRCA photographers at the PRCA when we were in Vegas so they have done amazing things they have um, really brought up their um, Facebook page they are they take fabulous photos all over um, they have been in Colorado they have come with us to Utah like they are just everywhere. They've got fabulous photos. And then, of course, you know, Shauna runs uh, Five Up Bucking Bulls and Glamity Jeans and Underground Bull Riding Productions. And so the three of us, even though we are super busy, um, we are each other's support group. And that is our circle, and that is how we are sharing our wins together. So it, it was it's really interesting. Like, that was where I went to for that note. So... Do you have anything else to add on there? No, I'm trying to find this post. Oh. <laughs> I can't find it. Um, so, reciprocal and rewarding relationships with social partners. Wise individuals are motivated by positive psychosocial values, findings which reflect an effective component of wisdom. Positive psychosocial values. Wise persons tend to see difficult life problems as multi-dimensional and multi-casual, necessitating a complex analysis of antecedents and sequelae of personal behavior. And I had to look that up too because I didn't know what that word meant. And so sequelae means lasting effects or consequences of an event. So what is happening here is the lesson. when the, the life problem happens, right? You're like, oh my God, I lost my apartment. I'm homeless. How did I get here? Right. right. 
Okay, well, I got here because I wasn't receiving my paycheck. I'm a 1099 contractor, um, and I, I wasn't managing my money well. I am also a server at the restaurant, so I wasn't bringing in enough money to cover my expenses because I was relying on the previous checks for my 1099 contract. So here we are. Now what do we do? Now I need to find a place to live, right? Mm -hmm. So there was so many things that had come into play in that one decision. It wasn't, okay, now I have to find a place to live. Right. It wasn't just that. It was like this slew of other things that had come in oh, to effect. make that decision. And then once you make that decision, what are, what are the effects of that afterwards, right? Okay, well, now, now we live out of town. Now I can't take 10 minutes to run to the store down the street. Now it's like a 30 minute round trip, mm -hmm. right? Plus the 30 minutes to be in the store, right? So I'm scheduling an hour, hour and a half, because depending on what time it is, if you hit rush hour traffic, it may be up to two hours before I can leave here and run to the store and grab some groceries and get home and then do what I was supposed to be doing that should have taken me 10 minutes if I lived in town. Mm -hmm. Right, and so there's all of or these other things. You can't even door dash it because yeah, because nobody come comes out here. <laughs> you know, so it's just like a. It's not a. This was a an A B decision thing. This was a whole lot of different variables that brought me to this place. Then now I have to make this decision, and then this decision will bring me to this whole other set of variables, and. If I make this decision and tweak it a little bit, that gives me a whole different set of variables in the after effects, mm -hmm. right? And so that's what they're thinking of. It's not just this one problem that has like an A, B equals C. It is a multi-dimensional and multi-casual mm -hmm. situation that is happening, right? Mm -hmm. um, so why do younger adults appear to have an integrated and coherent sense of self? We had just talked about that. They have well articulated goals for the future and the confidence that their actions will be instrumental in achieving them. They feel engaged rather than disenfranchised and seek out new challenges for living. I thought that was interesting because it said that they're seeking out new challenges. Oh my God. It, it feels like there's a herd of elephants underneath our trailer. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear. We didn't set up the microphone. Oh, we didn't set up the microphone. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys are hearing it, but yeah, there there we are. <laughs> oh um, so I, I I thought that was really interesting that they are seeking out new challenges for living. And in one way that kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. Right? Because they want to learn those lessons. Right, right. They are, they're not the brick wall. They're the sponge. Yeah. You know, when you start learning those life lessons and start really applying them to other situations or learning that that knowledge can help other people, you kind of want to go out and find some more lessons. Mm -hmm. Right? And... It feels like when I say that out loud, it kind of feels like an action junkie. <laughs> yeah. Right? But that's not... That's not it. It's not it at all. And it's because you're challenging yourself so much to learn new things and do new things and see new things and, you know, experience new things that... In order to learn. Well, and like, once you get to that point, do you... I don't know, like... Once you get to that point, it's like you've tried so many different things that you know you can't fail. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So why not try this? And why not try that? And why not, you know, do these things? And what's the worst that can happen if I do this? Me and my old best friend used to go by the saying of YOLO. YOLO. Yeah. So YOLO was, there was some shit that came out of that YOLO era. You know, people was 
definitely being in their villain era. <laughs> yeah, but like we also like had boundaries with it. Like let's not try everybody not to kill did. ourselves. Not like, everybody did. Yeah, not but, everybody like, did. Like that's the difference between it. Like right. So or if they you do it, I'll do it. Right. That one got us. Into yeah. <laughs> That one definitely got us into some shit. So with all of these notes on wisdom, what do you think? What do you think? Did you know this stuff? Did you not know this stuff? Is it applicable? Is it not applicable? Also, Burger King has, like, the best Oreo shakes, for the record. We're not sponsored by Burger King. Burger King, if you would like to sponsor us. I'm drinking water. We would love your shakes. And your Whoppers. Your Whoppers. Mm. <laughs> Quality shit, man. <laughs> Um, I, I mostly knew most of this. It's just worded differently. That's why I kind of made the notes around it. Mm -hmm. But I knew most of it. Yeah. What was interesting that you didn't know? Um, the... They don't have the fear of abandonment in being attracted. Yeah. That's wild to me. Yeah. That's wild to me. Yeah. Going back to that last slide, though, if you're constantly seeking those new challenges and stuff, it's yeah. not a thing. Yeah. It's not a thing. Yeah. You know? Oh, Carly's going to kill take me. Take off another one? Yeah, but it yeah. also, like, oh, still there. ripped my real nail oh, down. Oh, nice. Yeah. Good time. Good times. Um, can you share a story that you learned some pretty good wisdom on? Good life lessons. I don't think I'm ready for that one. Okay. Not even a little life lesson? Not that I can think of right now. Not that I can think of right now. Do you no. know any? So. Oh, there's so many. There's so many. Yeah, I Um, I don't like people. I don't really feel it. <laughs> okay. I don't have nail beds anymore after Carly. Oh, well, there's that. Um, I <laughs> have learned. <laughs> wow. Um, I'm so sorry. I wasn't. I'm so sorry. I wasn't trying to flip you guys off. I was literally just trying to show you what nails I did have. <laughs> but luckily you have school tomorrow and you can get them fixed. Yeah! <laughs> I love that I can go to school and just get my nails done. So I think one of the biggest life lessons I learned, I have learned, um, is when people show you who they are, you just have to listen. Mm -hmm. um, I have the tendency to look for the best in everybody, and that hasn't quite always worked out for me so well. And so I have taken a lot of potential as opposed to who people actually are. Um, we both have. Yeah. On that one. Um, I did that with... Uh, um, some significant relationships in my life. <laughs> me too. And and that has really come to bite me in the ass. And so I think one of the biggest lessons that I have um, continually learned is that I need to really listen when people are telling me who they are as opposed to who I think they are or who I think they should be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have one to come up with one? Okay. Even a little one? No. no. What about going to school? I don't think I've really been there long enough in mm -hmm. order to like have like a. Do you think people should go to college right after school? No. Why? Take a fucking minute. Take a. <laughs> I promise you, it's worth it. But don't take too long, otherwise you won't go. Do you think they should do college or just anything? Like, yeah, do college know. or school or... Something that'll get you through life. Yeah. Yeah. You need a skill. Yeah. You need a skill. Find a hobby. Yeah. Some Please find a skill. hobby. <laughs> do not, like... Find a healthy hobby. Yeah. But let's clarify that. Yeah. You need a healthy hobby. Um, 
So your significant other won't kill you. <laughs> Promise you, it's worth it. By the fucking great hobby. Yeah. Fuck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Don't be up their ass. That's a great hobby. Yeah. Yeah. So. I really liked this study. I think there was yeah, a lot of uh, really interesting um, lessons in here for me. I was like, yeah. oh man, I need to get, I need to get my shit together. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, Mom, show your notes. Yeah, she was, she was busy. <laughs> so when I'm looking down, I promise I'm listening. I'm just comprehending in my own way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as a wrap up, we are going to thank Justin Beck for being a sponsor. Thank you so much for, you know, giving the... I know! Fucking loser. I know. Fucking Fail. loser. Yeah, I was so excited about my makeup that I forgot this. <laughs> Fucking idiot. <laughs> um, so we want to thank Justin Beck for being a sponsor. You know, he really um, gives us the financial opportunity to um, keep doing this on a consistent basis. Thank you for joining us. Uh, join us for the next episode where we talk about calming breath. Oh my God, you did it. I did. I, did I know. I'm so excited. I'm on it. I'm telling you. I'm not like... I wasn't tired when I wrote these. Fair. Yeah. So, they're a little together than they normally are. <laughs> Somewhat. <laughs> so, Calming Breath will be our next episode. I'm and sorry. are we on our own for that one? Um, or do we have a guest? No, no, no. It'll be just us. It'll be just us. Yay. And um, we'll see if we can practice some Calming Breath without having you pass out. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> Look at her on your face is perfect. Um, well, okay, so I can't do yoga. Like, at all. Like, it should be illegal. Um, because I <laughs> try to just... She can do yoga. She just stops breathing. That's the problem. How are you going to be a downward dog and breathe? First of all, my boobs are in my face, so I can't fucking breathe. Okay? My lungs are clear in my fucking ears. <laughs> Yeah, it's just something you gotta practice. Can't do it. Something you gotta practice. Okay. Yeah! <laughs> it's not gonna work. The struggle is real. Alright, any questions, comments, concerns, email or message on YouTube or any of our other social medias? I'm we- behind on Instagram. I'm sorry. I'm like a week behind. It's been a long week. I was actually sick most of this week. Yeah, she was sick. Yeah, you were sick. Yeah. Um, so we obviously have Instagram. Um, I run Facebook. We are working on TikToks. That is in process. I started working on that yesterday. So that will be coming soon. Um, we have an email. If you have any uh, questions or want to get a hold of us, we are still looking for speakers as well. So if you want to be a speaker, feel free to reach out to us. You can do Facebook Messenger. We have an email, which is smilegirldontbenervous at gmail.com. You can message on on our Facebook page or our personal Facebook pages. Um, if you have our numbers, you can reach us there too. So I do check yeah. Instagram's inbox. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm on Facebook all the time for Smile Girl. So um, we'll reach out and let us know. And until then, you have a good week. Participate in the National Read Across America Day on March 2nd. Um, uh, read a Dr. Seuss book. Read those books, man. They are important. Give read me a Dr. Seuss book. Get some wisdom. Get read some, some fucking green eggs and ham. <laughs> All the places you go. All right, you guys. Thank you so much Cat for joining hat. us. <laughs> we will see you next week, all right? <laughs> Thanks. Goodbye. <laughs> the Julius is setting up. Hang on. I got a sneeze. Bless your face. Oh, you <laughs> spooky bitch. <laughs>